outside of Switzerland, um, and so we had to send it back in. So to protect your equipment, you do need a precharge resistor. Um, if I'm turning the car back on, I again make sure my switch is off so this is open. Turn on my um, maintenance switch or my emergency disconnect, and I give it three or four minutes. Um, I'm usually not in that big a rush um, before I turn on the car. That gives a little bit of time for these capacitors to charge and avoid those huge inrest currents. Again, we never use uh, um, spike um, suppression, uh, coil spike suppression diodes on our contactors and are advised by a special um, notice from uh, Kilovac, an application note, that doing so causes uh, you to delay the make or break time on these relays and, and cause corrosion, pitting, and, and uh, um, possibly even, you know, the welding of, and failure of this relay uh, by doing something where you're trying to, to do some good because you read about it in an online forum. Uh, I do not advocate the use of uh, coil suppression diodes, um, and I don't think you need them really in, in almost any application in an electric car. Uh, the 12-volt system is simply uh, not that noise-free anyway and doesn't have that many uh, um, really sensitive electronic components. The ones uh, that are added to it, because it is a noisy environment, normally have their own filtering to um, uh, prevent that being a problem. Uh, so I would not use a coil suppression diode. Do use a uh, pre-charge resistor anytime uh, you're switching into a uh, capacitive input, um, in, in which case uh, that would include our uh, air conditioner controller and our motor controller and our DC to DC converter to some degree. And so that's my advice on these uh, switches. By the way, these are, are a non-trivial expense. Uh, this uh, 200 amp ANA is, uh, runs about $200. This one that I really like, I actually found in an EV uh, parts uh, online uh, store for $888. I've seen them for $500, $600. Guys, when you're building an EV, eBay is your friend. Um, the, uh, you may not be into Pez dis dispensers, but I, uh, I get these and these. I get these for about 55 bucks. This was $156 instead of $888. Um, I think it's called uh, Auto Parts and, and Industrial Stuff, uh, <laughs> uh, Troy God on uh, eBay. Uh, but just search for the Kilovac contactors and they'll come up. Uh, I think he's getting about $156 for these. And I've seen him as high as $888 from the EV parts houses. So eBay can be your friend. Um, it seems like quite an expense, but you're gonna repeatedly, this is rated for up to 50,000 contacts. Uh, it'll break 2,500 amps up to four times. Um, it's, uh, it'll carry 400 amps. We have to be able to switch these power levels and uh, it takes a pretty hefty device in order to do it. One other note, we often, um, I may not do it in this case, we're not that high current. We did on the Speedster and probably will when we're using the smaller device. These ratings are really based on the assumption that you're gonna have a terminal lug on here that helps to dissipate and wick away the heat away from this uh, device. Um, you can actually enhance that a little bit. We could take a little copper plate, a couple inches this way, a couple inches this way, hang it off of each side, put some terminal bolts, make it easier to make our connections, but we also make it dissipate heat a little bit better. And that's, uh, uh, if you're uh, pretty wed to the do cuts you spent on one of these, that's a quick way to make them last a little bit longer, is to put a couple copper plates mounted with these bolts, use another bolt out here to connect your terminal lugs, and that gives you a little bit of heat sink on those terminals. It's a good idea. It's uh, not entirely necessary, but 
it'll make them last a little longer. Um, so that's pretty much it for some of our basic components we're going to use to wire up our uh, uh, controllers. Um, we've got them pretty much mounted in the car. Um, we're going to start uh, making our wiring connections and our, uh, um, our water system in the Mini Cooper. So stay with us. When Professor Ferdinand Porsche presented his first car in 1900 at the World Fair in Paris, everyone was astounded. An electric drive, two wheel hub motors. On the one hand, it was a sensation, but on the other, people quickly agreed, it won't work. Too bold, too fast, 50 kilometers per hour, it'll send the horses crazy. And now, it was bound to happen. The assignment, do everything differently, differently than expected. Do whatever you will, but don't touch that Porsche crest. Result? Concept study Porsche 918 Spider High Performance Hybrid. The design, more Porsche than ever. To turn in fabulous times on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Economically driven, at about three liters per 100 kilometers and with CO2 levels of about 70 grams per kilometer. A contradiction? Not at all. We call it Porsche Intelligent Performance. Today we're going to do just a real quick lesson, but you might want to get a pad of paper because uh, these are some signals that may uh, take you a while to chase down unless I give you the pin numbers. This is our DME, our drive uh, electrical unit, um, and we've removed the engine. These two connectors here are empty. Those are mostly the sensors and so forth on the engine. That leaves this connector here which is uh, technically X60004. Uh, um, and that is kind of an interface between the DME and the rest of the car. Let me uh, get a screwdriver and pull that out for you. to show you a little bit. This is a nice big electrical connector. It comes with this housing over the top and this is all wrapped up with tape. So we're filming this before Brian uh, retapes it and puts the housing back on it. We've taken that off to get access to the wires behind and that's how you uh, basically do it. If you turn it over in very small numbers, it shows you the end numbers of uh, the pins at each end of the connector in rows. And you'll have to use that to locate the actual wires. The, um, the wires we're interested in, and we'll just splice into them. Um, the first one is a uh, gray wire connected to pin 34. And that is one of our accelerator signals. We have two accelerator signals out. The DME gives the accelerator a ground and a 5 volt signal. Pin 34, the gray wire, is going to put out a signal from 0 to 2 volts, depending on the accelerator position. Right next to it, pin 35 is a um, brown and white wire. And that is the other signal wire from the accelerator. And that puts out 0 0.7 volts to 5 volts for the same throttle positions. And we're going to use those as inputs to our uh, controller. We've also got in and grabbed uh, 
pin 26, a yellow wire, and that is a brake signal indication. And we're going to use that as an input too into our controller. And finally, pin 19 is a yellow wire. Uh, excuse me, the, the brake uh, wire is a um, red and blue wire, pin number 26. I had to put a little splice of a yellow wire there to extend it. And we're going to use those signals as an input to our controller. Basically, uh, you simply